so. So let's go for it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Our next speaker is uh, Yannick Moy. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm leading the development of the Spark technology at Edocore. So Edocore is a free software uh, a provider of development environments. In particular, we developed the GNAT compiler for Ada, which is part of GCC. At least that's how we started uh, 20 years ago, and today that's still uh, half of our activity, and the other half is on all the other tools that you need when you develop uh, critical software. I am going to talk about Spark. Uh, so Spark is a technology to prove properties of programs. And when I mention uh, proof, I'm sure that some of you may have uh, very bad memories coming back to uh, your mind about uh, vicious math uh, prof uh, in uh, high school. Uh, so if that happens to you, just relax, because with Spark, uh, the tool does the math, and you do the code. So here is a satellite view of the technology. Spark takes programs in the ADA programming language. Uh, it turns them into the intermediate verification language called Y3, and it uses the Y3 verification platform to generate formulas, logical mathematical formulas that are proved by uh, these things, which are automatic provers. Uh, Alter Go CVC 4Z3. And all of these uh, pieces are free software uh, developed by separate uh, groups that we integrate and to which we contribute. So let's see now on an example how this works. Uh, I'm assuming that you know Tetris. Uh, whatever your program, there are typically two kinds of properties that you may want to uh, verify. Uh, for first, you want to check that the program doesn't go wild, that it stays within reasonable bounds. That's what we call uh, program integrity. Uh, and then you want to uh, ensure that the program does something good. And that's what we call, uh, what we call functionality. So for Tetris, we'd like to show that uh, all the data that is read is properly initialized, a uh, typical uh, reason for, for bugs, and that there are no language error or exceptions, so depending on the language. So for example, division by zero, uh, buffer overflow, et cetera. So that's, part, that's for the program integrity. Then we'd like to show that the flow of data in the program is correct. It's accessed correctly with respect to the specification. Uh, that complete lines are removed. And that's quite important that because that's how you score points. Uh, and that the falling piece doesn't overlap with the pieces that have already fallen or doesn't go uh, outside because then uh, it's really annoying when a piece goes somewhere you cannot uh, see it anymore. So that's, that's for the functionality. So let's see how you express that uh, in ADA. Uh, so in ADA, there's, there are very rich features to express uh, data types. So for example, uh, the cell here, you can express it with the, uh, an enumeration. So either empty or one of the uh, well-known shapes of Tetris. So for example, if you tilt your head on the right a bit, you will see that this one is a J. And the shape is any cell that is not the empty one, so a subtype of this one. And the three shape is also a subtype of cell for those shapes that fit uh, within a, a square bounding box of size three. So that's all the shapes except uh, I and O because they are of size four and two respectively. So that's for the cell. Then a, a piece is a record made of a shape, a direction, which is itself an enumeration and then a pair of coordinates for the top left cell in the square bounding box. So it defines the position of a piece. And we have the current piece uh, following, which is a global variable called current piece. And finally, the board uh, is just uh, a matrix. So uh, the board is an array of lines, where nine is an array of cells. Uh, and we have the board here as a global variable. The API uh, of Tetris is quite simple. So you have five possible actions that you can apply to the piece. Uh, so you can move left, so your left. Uh, you can move right, your right. Uh, you can move down, OK? And you can turn uh, counterclockwise and, and clockwise. And I won't do any funny gymnastic here. <laughs> uh, so there's a procedure to action that applies an action and uh, tells you if this was successful. For, for example, if I'm uh, completely on, on your left, I won't be able to move more. Okay, so that's, 
the, the function procedure tells you, tells the caller about it. And there's a procedure to include the piece in the board after it has fallen and to delay the complete lines to score points. And you can see here on this main function, essentially a, a main loop with a, a sub loop, uh, how, where these various pieces of the API are called, so nothing surprising. So let's see how we now analyze this code. Uh, we could do it on the command line uh, or in any of the IDs that we support. So for example, in one of the IDs, you go to the Spark menu and you click on Examine File. This starts by generating a bunch of useful information and then calls this data and information flow algorithm. If it returns without any message, that means that there are no reads of initialized data in your program. That's the case here, so quite good. So let's go further. Let's state the actual accesses to global variable uh, in the API. Uh, so for example, the procedure do action will read the global variable the, that represents the board. It will read the current piece, and it may update the current piece because it will change its uh, direction or its uh, location. So we uh, specify it with this contract here, this global contract, saying that cure board should be an input and cure piece should be an input output. And we do this for all the API, really easy here. And when the uh, analysis, so re-clicking on examine file, returns without any message, we now know that the implementation of the code uh, respects uh, all these, uh, these correct data flows in the, in the, in the specification. So let's go further. Uh, now let's click in the Spark menu on proof file. So now, again, after generation of uh, some useful information, it does, again, the same flow analysis, and now goes to proof. So calling the provers that I mentioned uh, before. This time, if you get no message, you get the guarantee that there are no runtime errors in your program. So no division by zero, no buffer overflow, which may have an impact on security. Uh, here, unfortunately, we get six messages on possible buffer overflows and four messages and possible violations of uh, data ranges. So in fact, this is expected because uh, as many programs, the API is not supposed to be called in any order at any time during the lifetime of the, uh, of the game. So uh, you need to specify the precondition. Precondition, uh, we can specify it with the additional contract pre, states when you are allowed to uh, call this uh, uh, procedure. And here it says that for calling this procedure, include piece in board, the current piece has to be within bounds. Within bounds, we express it easily in ADA with a, uh, what we call an expression function. So a function whose body is simply an expression. So we can think of uh, functional language a bit. So here it discriminates on the shape of the uh, piece. And depending on the shape, it does various checks that rely on another expression function uh, within bounds that states that a pair of coordinates is within the, uh, uh, the bounds of the board. And with these preconditions uh, on two functions, we have got no messages, so we are sure that uh, the call game logic has no runtime errors. Quite good. So let's go one step further, and let's express the reach properties that I talked about at the beginning. So the fact that there are no complete lines and there's no overlap. So for example, uh, no complete lines uh, of, for the board uh, can be expressed as an expression like before, saying that for all Y coordinates, then uh, the line on the board at this coordinate is not complete. And the fact that the line is complete is also uh, expressed as an expression function here, saying that for all uh, cells on the line, uh, then the line at this, loca at this location, that's an array access in ADA, uh, is not the empty one. So that's really easy. Notice here that I have sticked this annotation ghost. That means that this function is only meant for verification it's a ghost function. It will be stripped out of the final binary uh, when, when we build it. So over, no overlap is uh, similar. So uh, with a richer case expression here that discriminates on the shape of the piece, but that's equivalent. Well, these properties don't, all, don't hold always. They hold at certain por uh, parts of the program. And for this, we need to express the underlying state automaton of the program. Uh, for this uh, Tetris, that's really simple. First, the piece is falling here. Then the piece is blocked. Uh, then the piece is including in the board. So there's no uh, uh, current piece anymore. And then, hopefully, some uh, full lines are removed and you score points. And here we get the, the board uh, 
where the full line has been removed. So that's four states, and it loops until you lose. Uh, we can express that in ghost code in ADA. Uh, so uh, we can define a, a ghost state okay, that uh, defines these four possible states in an, in an enumeration. And we have a, a global variable current state that uh, stores the current state. That's also a ghost variable. And then a valid configuration uh, discriminates on the value of the current state. So for example, for the first two uh, states, we want to ensure that the current piece is not overlapping with the current board. Afterward, it doesn't matter because there's, there's no current piece anymore. Uh, and we want for the last uh, states, well, after clean, that there are no complete lines. So the, function, the two functions we defined before, we call them here as part of the valid configuration, and that depends on the current state. So that's, again, a ghost function. And finally, we can use uh, these uh, specification functions in the contract for our API. So including piece in board should have a a contract here that states the precondition, so in which cases you can call it, and the post condition, which states what this uh, service guarantees to the caller. So the precondition here for include piece in boards, include piece in board should be uh, called uh, here, should, should be called uh, here. So it should be called when the current states is that the piece is blocked, and we have a valid configuration. So this is something that is maintained. This is an invariant of the program, this valid configuration. And it should uh, return with the current state be being bored before clean here, and still with a valid configuration. So let's now recall proof file on these codes. Does the same. There's no message. Well, you can get the list of things that, has, that, uh, that have been proved if you uh, uh, select the right uh, 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 switch. But otherwise, it returns without any message. So you've proved uh, that your code, which is here, well, less than 200 lines of code, completely implements the specification, the rich specification that we've uh, chosen. How hard was it? Because these kind of tools can sometimes run for hours, uh, uh, eat uh, gigabytes of memory, so that, that can be a concern. Uh, here, due to the modular way that analysis is performed function by function, uh, it's fully proved at what we call level zero out of four levels. So, uh, well, the, the details that only one prover Automatic prover is called. Uh, we leave it very little time for each individual proof, one second. And we don't split the work for, uh, for it. So we just, uh, uh, each time, uh, give it one full thing to prove. And it's proved in 11 seconds on one core. And it goes down to four uh, seconds on multi-core. Of course, on such a small, exa small example, that doesn't really matter. But on big example, yes, this is uh, fully bulk automation, bulk parallelism, sorry, uh, for, uh, for proving things uh, independently. Uh, we have uh, compiled this code, this uh, uh, proven Tetris. So you've seen now what I mean by proved. Uh, for originally for this uh, Atmel uh, sam 4 s Explain Pro board, uh, and uh, so there's a small display here that's really uh, just to, uh, to play with it. And with my colleague uh, Tristan Jingold, who presented the, yesterday the 64-bit uh, uh, met, uh, bare metal programming on Raspberry Pi 3, we, do, we did the drivers and the uh, the BSP for this board. And then another colleague uh, ported it to uh, the, his Pebble Time Watch. Uh, then another colleague ported it to the Unity game platform. And uh, the last one we did is this uh, RD Boy uh, uh, game, game platform that I have here. Uh, where uh, here, uh, this is interesting because we don't have uh, an EDIC, we don't uh, develop an EDIC compiler for this AVR 8 bit. Uh, processor that I have here. So we, we compile the Spark code to C, and then uh, using this C, the C code to uh, this platform. So you can have the, the full story be behind this project at blog.edocore.com, including the source codes. Uh, and you can download the tool set at libre.edocore.com. Uh, I have many more uh, links on the uh, page of the talk uh, with extensive documentation, with a free uh, online e-learning course. Uh, there's a university book on Spark. Um, most of our users, they're big industrial products. So for example, if you fly to the UK, you're using Spark unknowingly because the uh, air traffic control in the UK uh, is written in Spark, the tool that uh, air traffic controllers use for routing uh, planes and, and detecting conflicts. Uh, but there are also uh, uh, free software groups that use Spark. So for example, uh, the Muen separation kernel, which is developed uh, in the University of Rappersville in Switzerland, uh, is done in Spark. So thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Yannick. 
I think there's no time for questions. Okay. There's hardly one minute left. So if you have